Hello everyone, today we are going to read Renal Physiology. I am going to talk mainly about the three parts in this video. The first one is basic anatomy of the kidney, basic structures, the function and the blood supply of the kidney. So let's begin with the basic anatomy. We can divide kidney into three parts. The outermost cortex, which is outlined in the red color here. The inner medulla, which is formed by the pyramidal structures or the triangular structures. And the innermost pelvis, which is outlined in the blue here. So now, the urine from the pyramids is collected and it travels through the minor calices, then the major calices and into the pelvis. From the pelvis it goes into the ureter, from the ureter to the urinary bladder and at last from the urinary bladder it travels through the ureter. From, this is the frontal section of the kidney that you are seeing. So this will be the left part and this will be the right part of the, towards the right part of the body. Now from a uh, few points from the histology, the medulla is darker in color. When you see a cross section of the kidney, when you have a kidney in your hand, you'll see the medulla, that is the inner part, is dark or brown red in color. The outermost, that is cortex, it is light and it is granular, like, like small granules are formed here. This was the basic anatomy. Now let's start. Let's continue with the functions of the kidney. Every day around 200 liters of fluid is being filtered from the kidney. These are the main eight functions of the kidney. Let's talk about the first point, which is blood pH. Now pH is formed because of two ions. The first one is hydrogen ion and the second one is bicarbonate ion, H plus and HCO3 minus. What our kidney does is it excretes the hydrogen ion from our blood into the urine outside the body. And what it does with the bicarbonate ions is it absorbs it. Why? Normally in our blood, it normally our blood is more acidic, so it contains more, more hydrogen ion. Now to neutralize the hydrogen ion, kidney, kidney absorbs the bicarbonate ions. And thus we can say bicarbonate ion acts as a buffer towards hydrogen ion that is already present in our blood. The second point is blood ionic composition. In the blood, so many ions are present, for example, the following sodium, potassium, calcium. Kidney excretes some of them, kidney reabsorbs some of them, so it maintains the uh, hemostasis. The next one is blood volume. This is the main function of the kidney. It absorbs as well as excretes water according to the need of our body. For example, if a person is in desert, he doesn't have more water, so kidney will try to reabsorb more water and thus there will be less amount of water in urine and we'll call it concentrated urine. Now, if there is more water in our body, that is more water in our blood, it will lead to increased blood volume. BV is blood volume and BP is blood pressure. So, increased blood volume will lead to increased blood pressure. I hope this point is clear. Let's jump up to the next one, which is blood pressure. Now, the kidney excretes one hormone, which is known as renin, R-E-N-I-N. What this hormone does is, it activates the system, RAAS system, renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system. The main function of this system is that it increases the blood pressure of our body or it uh, like maintains the blood pressure of our body. I'll explain this in further videos. The fifth point is blood osmolarity. Now, in the blood, both solutes and water are present. So whenever the solutes concentration increases, and water concentration decreases, it leads to more osmolarity of the blood. So what kidney does is, it sometimes it absorbs more water, it excretes solutes, so this leads to decreased osmolarity. Normally the osmolarity of our blood is 300 milliosmoles per liter. You need to remember this point, 300 milliosmoles per liter. So it maintains around 300. The sixth point is blood glucose. Now, we know there are two main important organs in our body which take parts in the gluconeogenesis. First one is liver, second one is kidney. What kidney does is, two important organs in our body that take parts in the gluconeogenesis. First one is liver and the second one is kidney. So here what kidney does is, it converts the amino acids into the glucose. And thus, there is high amount of glucose in our body or in our blood that's why it regulates like the blood glucose. The seventh point is hormones. Now this is very important component, very important function of the kidney. There are three hormones that are released from the kidney. Erythropoietin, 
renin and 1 2 5 dihydroxy cholecalciferol now let's talk about them individually erythropoietin is responsible for rbc production we need erythropoietin if there is no erythropoietin in our body there will be no red blood cells what renin does is you can see number 0.4 it activates ras system what what is 1 2 5 dihydroxy cholecalciferol this is an active form of vitamin d and why it is important because it regulates the calcium hemostasis in our body what is hemostasis let's talk about it in brief hemostasis is when you maintain the normal for example normal fluids normal level or normal body temperature you take everything to the normal that is called as hemostasis so again this is a active form of vitamin d which will take part in the regulation of calcium hemostasis the next one is eight this is like the most important point excretion now kidney excrete some products re uh, reabsorb some products filter some products filter our blood and what does it what it excretes is ammonia bilirubin creatinine and uric acids basically four excretory products let's remind again ammonia bilirubin creatinine and uric acid ammonia is formed by the deamination of amines bilirubin is formed because of the catabolism of hemoglobin hemoglobin destruction leads to bilirubin formation creatinine is a product of degradation of creatine phosphate uric acid is a product of catabolism of nucleic acid i hope this is clear all right so in short in brief you can say what are the functions of kidney excretion filter and reabsorption and you can conclude in these points the next part is blood supply of the kidney so there are these arteries and veins that supply the kidney we'll first start with the abdominal aorta now in a normal individual the abdominal aorta tends to be towards the left side it shifts from the midline towards the left side and it gives the branch which is known as renal artery that is the main artery which is supplying the kidney now because abdominal aorta is normally towards the left like a bit shifted towards the left so the right renal artery is longer than the left renal artery just keep this in your mind this renal artery then forms the branches five segmental arteries while entering into the pelvis it forms five segmental arteries from intersegmental artery it forms interlobal arteries now see there are two terms interlobal and interlobular you need to differentiate while after entering pelvis it forms interlobar artery in the medulla of the kidney then at the junction of medulla and cortex it forms arcuate artery when this arcuate artery goes towards the base of the pyramid this is the base this is the apex so when it goes towards the base of the pyramid it forms interlobular artery this interlobular artery further branches into afferent arterioles from arterioles it goes to the glomerulus or into the glomeruli from the glomeruli it forms efferent arterioles from the efferent arterioles it forms peritubular capillaries now you need to connect arteries and veins so in between peritubular capillaries this peritubular capillaries branches into the veins now as you remember three main arteries like the three arteries interlobal artery arcuate artery and interlobular arteries same are the names of the veins interlobal vein arcuate vein and interlobular vein now as you remember the right artery is longer than the left one right renal artery is longer than the left one the in case of the veins it's opposite so the left renal vein is larger than the right renal vein i hope this concludes the video thank you so much